Good morning. We welcome you to our live stream service from the Southford Christian Center in National City. So glad that you've joined us at home, glad that you're here in person, and you still have time to make it if you hurry. We want you to be here for every part of the worship, which will begin in just a few moments. Whatever your needs are this morning, just know that where Jesus is, there is healing, there is deliverance, there is salvation, amen, whatever we need. So come to the table and help yourself as we worship and begin our service, giving it to the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for loving us, for always being where we are, because you live in us, Father. We give you praise. Lord, we dedicate this service to you. We ask that your presence will be at home, in this room, wherever people are listening. And may every burden become lighter because they've given it to you, Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory as we give this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join Pastor Rick and the team as they lead us in worship. Amen. 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 We're ready to worship God this morning. Yes. If you're watching us from home, come on, stand up from that couch. Stand up from that table. And let's just begin to worship God this morning. If you're here with us, you know what? Let's make his praise glorious today. Amen. 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 We just want to just lift him up this morning. As a matter of fact, I want to just start off by doing that. I want to start off by just praising his name, worshiping his name. His name is Jesus. Amen. Yes. Jesus is above all other names. Yes. Jesus brings healing. Jesus brings comfort. Jesus brings joy. Let's lift our hands to him just for a moment and just to lift our face before him and just call out his name. And say, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. Jesus, we want to make your praise glorious in this place this morning. For you are worthy. We worship you and we worship you alone. We thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for this place. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for those that are watching us from home. Thank you for those that are here. Oh, God, we worship you and you alone this morning, Lord. We focus all our praise, all our might, all our soul, all our strength on you this morning, oh God. And we do this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give you praise. Amen. Come on, give you praise.
Mission Sunday. Uh, while I have your attention for a moment, uh, the last song we sang, it, He'll Never Let Us Down, He'll Never, Never, Never Let Us Down. No matter what the enemy's lying to you, saying to you about God, God is always good. Always good. He is always good. Don't let the lies of the enemy deceive you and think that he's not. It's not God's fault that you're going through the trial and tribulation you're going through. God is good. No matter what your circumstances, trust him through this trial, through this test. And he will see you through to the other side. Just like Job was sifted and asked that the devil could ask God that, that, that hey, uh, let me, let me, let me do, to take him through trials and tribulations. Let me show you that his faith is not genuine. God does the same for each and every one of us. He allows, he allows yeah. tribulation. But through it all, he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He is with you every step of the way. We must trust him. Through the chaos that's happening across our nation right now, we need to trust God through the midst of the chaos. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Trust him that he will see you through to through, through that light. Yes. Be in prayer. Be in intercession for our leaders. Be in intercession for our nation. Yes. And trust that God will see us through. He is faithful to his word and faithful to his promises. Yes. Now, as we prepare for the communion service, you've had enough time now to get the, the juice and the cracker or the bread. Okay? So, now it's time. Father, we give you praise and thanks for this another day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, which were new for us this morning. Father, we thank you that you are our source and our resource, our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we can trust. Father, where everything else seems to let us down, we thank you that you are faithful, that you never let us down. You are always good. Good, good, so good. And we thank you for that, Father. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we recognize that we have a covenant with you, a covenant that was ratified by the shed blood of Jesus at Calvary. And because of the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us, that his blood was shed, our behalf. Lord, 
we acknowledge that he bore sin, sickness, disease, sorrow, grief, fear, torment, unforgiveness, strife, and lack for us. Through his substitutionary sacrifice, we have complete redemption, total deliverance from the works of Satan. As new creations in Christ Jesus, we realize our freedom has been bought and paid for. We are forgiven, and we give thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we examine our own hearts. We judge ourselves according to the authority of your word in areas where we've missed the mark. Strife, unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, hatred, covetousness, fear, worry, unbelief in any other area. We take Jesus as our advocate and high priest. We ask forgiveness according to the word of God in 1 John 1, 9, where your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive us when we confess our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we do not eat of the bread nor drink of the cup unworthily, but we rightly discern the Lord's body. Father, we receive communion together now as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I thank you that we are free from the works of Satan, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Please partake of the bread. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the blessed death till he come. Father, we give you thanks for all you've provided for us. Please take of the drink, please. We thank you, Father, for all you've provided for us in Christ Jesus. We confess this day that we are blessed of the Lord. This covenant we enter into with a new birth is a covenant filled with the exceeding precious, great precious promises of God. And we are particular those promises now. We are healed, we are redeemed, we are delivered from the authority of darkness, we are translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. We are the head, not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We come behind and know good thing in all that we set our hands to prosperous. And we praise you, thank you, Father, for the newness of life we now enjoy. In Jesus' is mighty name. We thank you.
may be seated. It's hard to comprehend the love of God, isn't it? We think of how he loves us. It extends to us in so many ways. His precious promises are so real. It's a joy to worship with you this morning. On our back counter is our offering box, and um, you can use it as you come in each Sunday, or you can use the Push Pay app, which is at the bottom of your bulletin. So God bless you. Thank you for your love and your prayers and your faithful giving to us. Brother Sal has an exciting announcement for our men, so I'll ask him to come and make that right now. Hi, good morning. I just want to make a quick, quick announcement. Men's camp, I, I saw the list in the back, uh, praise God, of men signing up. If you do remember, just please put your uh, contact number, because I may not have all your contact number on there. So if you guys could please do that. And also I wanted to announce a men's breakfast on the 16th. That's a Saturday, that's the week before men's camp. And we can go through all the, uh, the details of men's camp that day as well. So it's Saturday the 16th, 8 o'clock, and we are going to have it at the restaurant on 3rd Street. I believe it's called... Uh, uh, park, Jimmy by the Park, or some of that effect. I'll let you guys know for sure. But uh, it's where we usually had our men's breakfast. So just remember, contact numbers and men's breakfast on the 16th and men's camp on the 22nd. All right, thank you. Brother Sal is taking good care of our men. Have you noticed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So grateful for your ministry. Well, it's a joy to be together with you this morning and to see the blessing of the Lord evident in your face. I can tell you love him a lot, and I know that he loves you a lot. Thanks for sharing your answers to prayer and other things that you have been experiencing this week in the Lord. It's been marvelous to see his hand at work. Some of you have received healing. Some of you have received direction. Some of you have comfort for lost loved ones. and. We're blessed, aren't we? Yeah, yes. yes. It's just yes. so wonderful to know him. Well, I want to talk to you a bit more today about the gift of prophecy. Yes. We've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and God has given such wonderful gifts to the church yes. through the Holy Spirit. If you've received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you know what a gift it is. Amen? Yes. You're empowered. The Son of God lives in you and enables you to carry out his work on earth. And we have to have that if we're going to do what the Lord needs done in our day. We carry out his earthly ministry because his Holy Spirit lives in us. Isn't that an amazing thing? When I think of the Holy Spirit living in me, it's almost more than I can take in. I don't know about you, but it overwhelms me every day of my life, and I'm so glad he does. We must learn to speak what we hear him say and do what we see him do. Yes. Just like he followed his Father's will when he was here, so we follow Jesus yes. and do what he says and did. John 5, 19, Jesus said these words, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, he does in like manner. If Jesus followed his Father so closely, how much more must we follow Jesus? Amen? and listen carefully to his voice. Our spiritual senses must be awakened, and we must, we, we must learn to allow the Holy Spirit to minister through us. And there's one more essential step. God didn't design us to operate independently of each other. We are all part of his body, and he is the head. We are a community of believers, and he wants us to work together as a team to carry his salvation to our Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The clearest picture of how the gifts operated in the early church are found in 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14. And here Paul describes the gifts and gives strong instruction as to how they're to be carried out. Paul pastored this church for the first year and a half of his existence. And then five years later, He's writing a letter to correct the wrongs and the things that must be worked out in that church. This was not a healthy church by that time. And we can learn the right way by listening to Paul as he corrects the wrong way in those chapters. Paul was not finding fault with the gifts, 
but with the way they were being used. There's nothing wrong with the gifts God gave, but sometimes man can get in the way of those gifts and use them wrongly. So he was trying to stop those behaviors and replace them with ones that would bring honor and glory to God. He wanted zealous believers to continue moving freely in the Holy Spirit and be guided by the same selfless love that took Jesus to the cross. He urged them to prioritize the needs of others, to avoid pride, and do nothing that would draw attention to itself away from Jesus. He wants to ensure that the gifts of the Spirit would not cease because of misuse. Paul reminds us that not all spiritual manifestations are from the Lord. The devil can also inspire prophecies and even do wonders. Greek religions in the early days of the church led to deception and bondage. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 1-3, Paul wrote, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware or ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I make known to you that no one, speaking by the Spirit of God, says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the gospel was a new message that was confronting established religions and was often violently opposed in the early days. Each of us must learn to separate what is true from what is false. We must be aware when we are speaking, is this God's word or is it mine? And we must humbly stop if it's just us. Since the Holy Spirit places his gifts within each believer, every one of us is capable of prophesying when the Holy Spirit leads us. 1 Corinthians 14, 31, Paul writes, For you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. <coughs> our submission to the Lord, our love for his people are the main factors that determine our effectiveness in ministry. Always keep that to the foreground. Loving God with our whole heart and loving his people, and that will bring pure ministry. If we minister without these qualities, we can mislead or confuse or cause others to despise prophetic utterances. But in spite of the danger, when prophecy is genuine, it edifies, it exhorts, and it comforts God's people. Amen? 1 Corinthians 14.4 tells us that it enables us to hear from God, and hearing from Him always brings life. The benefits that come from this gift are so great that we must learn how to prophesy properly and never discard it. Paul exhorted the church in Thessalonians with these words in 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Do not quench or put out the fire of the Spirit. Now, for just a moment, let's go deep together. <coughs> Number one, true spiritual fires can dwindle if we allow the excitement of crowds or miracles to dull our ears to hearing the real truth that the Holy Spirit would give us. Number two, when we look to the visitation of the Spirit to shore up weakness in local fellowship instead of correcting problems, it can be minimized. When we allow pride and showmanship to distort the simplicity of God's working, it can become a publicized event and lose its effectiveness. When we fail to maintain the balance of pastoral needs of the congregation, substituting the sheer energy of meeting of shepherd's care and faithful feeding of the sheep. If we neglect to make disciples who would have multiplied the effectiveness of revival, if we allow breakdown of authority and unity in the leadership team through carelessness and prayerlessness and weariness, when we look to professionals to grow the church instead of releasing ministries within the church to function, when we love the focus, lose the focus and object of true worship, when we allow the excitement of revival to take priority over humble prayer and intercession, and when we see revival as a way to advance a congregation rather than to grow the whole church. Those are solemn thoughts, aren't they? And things to consider as we realize that the Holy Spirit flows through us in ministry. 
Paul goes on to say in verses 20 to 22, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And we hear what Paul is saying there. Don't let false prophecy cause you to stop longing for true prophecy. Amen. True prophecy is uplifting and edifying and comforting. The greatest danger of the false is it takes away our appetite for the true. It might leave us even cynical and dismissing all prophecy and reducing the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying, don't withdraw, but become more discerning. To stay so committed to hearing a true word from God that we will recognize and not tolerate a false word. As we do these things, we will always choose to be kind and to minister in love. And there's always room for mistakes while we're learning. Finally, if we're to grow in the ministry of spiritual gifts, we must accept the responsibility to grow stronger in our ability to recognize the voice of God. There may be mistakes as we grow, but we must learn to separate the wheat from the chaff. Paul wrote to the Corinthians to help them correct their mistakes, not to stop the ministry of the gifts. He wanted them to grow in the way that they express them. So the question for us is, are we willing to grow? The scripture will always be our final authority. No prophetic word will ever be valued over God's word. And every prophetic word will be tested by scripture. Never forget, God wants to edify, exhort, and comfort his people with the prophetic word. The prophetic word is needed in the church today, and I thank yeah, God yeah, yeah. for the prophets he has placed yeah. among us. Amen? Yeah. People that have that gift and minister it so beautiful, beautifully. I want you to know, too, that God will give us hearts to discern, that he will continue to speak to us, yes. and that we will hear his voice as he does. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul explains the absolute necessity of love in the ministry of the gifts. Verses 1 and 2 record this. Paul said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become what? Sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. And that's not a good sound. <laughs> Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, if I don't have love, I am nothing. In the rest of the chapter, Paul defines the essence of love and all of its characteristics and contrasts the eternal qualities of love with the temporal qualities of gifts. The motive for our godliness continues to be love, love for God and love for each other. When his unconditional love permeates our attitudes and our thoughts and our motives, our words and our actions, the Spirit of God can freely flow. Amen? Amen? And that's surely what we want. May we prayerfully understand that love validates spiritual gifts. You know, a gift is wonderful, but if it's not motivated by a loving heart and a loving spirit, it can be received. It's too hurtful. And we thank God that he has given us the gift of love. Amen? That can accompany the ministry of every spiritual gift. When they are ministered with God's love, the body is exhorted and edified and comforted, and you feel better than you did after it was ministered. Christ is the head of the church. We are his body. And as we grow together, guess what? We become more and more like Jesus. Others will see Jesus in us and will be able to respond and hear from him, and needs will be met. Don't you love it that he has placed these gifts within the church. We have prophets among us who minister wonderful words. And I don't know about you, but I have received so many words in my life that have come just at the right time and brought such comfort and edification and exhortation. I want to be that person to someone else, don't you? I know you do, and God is using you and blessing you, and we're so thankful for the gifts that operate among us. And I want you to know that each of you has a word to minister to someone else today. Yeah. Several of you have shared that the last time we did that, 
but they did minister to someone else so beautifully. And I want you to allow God to use the gifts that he has placed within you. As you relate to each other socially and in fellowship, don't be surprised if God whispers a word to your heart. Give it to your brother or sister and let them be built up and edified in Jesus. Make them glad that they came to church that day and were touched by God's love because that's what he wants to do through each of you. So as a member of the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Allow him to work out through you and express his love to others. Amen? Amen. The church will be edified and Jesus will be glorified. And if you're listening today and would like to become part of this body of believers and grow with us, I want you to know you can. Open your heart to receive him as your savior and begin your walk with him today as we pray in a few moments. And I want you to know before you leave today, as we conclude our service in a few moments, as the worship team will come and minister to us once again, and they're going to sing to us of the goodness of God. I want you to realize that one of the greatest blessings he has given us is his Holy Spirit and all the gifts that are related to it. And every one of you will have a word for someone else as you trust the Lord. Many times over, I've been encouraged and received the word just in time. It just was exactly what the doctor ordered, you might say. And it was actually the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that ordered it. And so I encourage you today that before you leave, allow the Lord to speak through you to someone else and then edify them and build them up. God will bless you and you will be blessed. And now let's join the worship team as they sing again the goodness of God.
goodness of God. I'm probably the oldest person in the room. And I want you to know, God has never failed me one single day. Ever. Never. His promises are always true. His goodness pursues me all the days of my life. Amen. Let's give him praise. goodness and mercy follow me how long? All, All the days of my life. Amen. Amen. And when David exhorted us this morning with communion, he reminded us, God's been faithful up till now. Can we trust him with the future? Can you trust him with tomorrow? He's already been there. His mercy endures forever. Oh, how good our God is. I want you to live in victory, dear ones. I don't want you to be infected with the virus of fear. It's worse than COVID. And I tell you, it is gripping so many hearts, it tears my heart out. I conducted a funeral on Thursday for a 42-year-old mother that had died of an overdose of drugs. Left two small children, weeping their eyes out. Where's mom? I don't want anyone to miss what God has for them. God has a plan for our lives, dear ones. Wherever you find yourself today, I want you to know God has a plan. He's already been there and worked out the details. You can absolutely trust Him with your life. He will not abuse you. He will not mistreat you. He will not leave you alone. He will not neglect you. He has provided for ever care. He loves you so much with unfailing yes. love. So I just encourage him to trust him with everything he has. When fear starts to grip, remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, fear but of love. power and of love and of a sound mind. The enemy will trick you into thinking that you, this is coming and that's coming. But I've been reminded all week of a wonderful scripture that says, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. Amen. With an unfailing love and with that goodness that we were singing about a moment ago. God bless you. Give you a wonderful week. And today before you leave, encourage someone with the word from the Lord. Will you do that? You will be blessed and they will be edified. Thank you all who are listening on live stream. Thank you for joining us today for your faithful love and prayers and your support of this ministry. We are so grateful. We want to remind you of the services that we offer through the week. Every Monday night, our families gather for prayer in their homes, and we are you to do the same thing as you believe for the needs that you know about. On Tuesday, Ruth's ladies come and join her at 1030 for a wonderful Bible study. And a week from Tuesday, they're having their first potluck in a long time, and we ask you ladies to put that on your calendar and join us. On Wednesdays, we have food service at the church at 10 o'clock. At 6 o'clock in the evening, Brother Sal gathers with his men for a Zoom meeting. And I hear wonderful reports that even people from other states are joining, and so we urge you to be part of that. And at 7 o'clock, we have a live stream Bible study in the book of Nehemiah, where we're learning how to allow God to rebuild our lives as he rebuilt the walls in Jerusalem. Then on Friday, we offer food at the church at 10 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, we minister to our young people and young adults. We invite you to come to that service. On Saturday, again, we have food. And then next Sunday at 1030, we'll join for a time of celebration as we honor our staff and have a wonderful meal at the close of that meeting. Also, bringing a mechanical bull for those of you that are brave enough to ride. <laughs> yep, I see adults raising their hands and I want to see that. So it'll be a, a wonderful time of fellowship and, and food and fun. We'll look forward to that. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. This week, find a way to edify, exhort, and build up your brothers and sisters. God bless you.